Great. And Jim, um, for some reason, my computer does not allow me to open the DNS um, file I download from the website. Um, so when we talk about the DNS, I'm going to make you the co-host. You use you share your. Okay. Yeah, I have it. I have it ready. Okay. Okay, Jackie. So um, our agenda is going to change a little. Okay. With this meeting, uh, okay. I have an announcement to make. Okay. Um, I, the announcement is. Uh, I have appointed Sandra Stuthers as my co-chair for this committee. Oh. And I wanna congratulate Sandra. I wanna also introduce her, maybe give her a minute or so to uh, introduce herself to, to the committee. Sandra? Hi, um, I think everybody knows me, but I'm Sandra Strother and I've been on the committee since about 2015 and I'm, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to know? I'm the president of the Grand Street Guild Residents Association also. So and that's a session eight. Um... Right, section eight housing. Okay, right. Yes. Thank you, Sandra. I, I think Sandra is going to be a big help to our committee um, going forward. Sandra has a lot of contacts in the community with uh, section eight and NYCHA. Um and uh, I believe she's going to be a big help to us. I know she's going to be a big help to me. She's she already has been within the last couple of days at, of her appointment. Um, with that being said, um, we really have nothing on the agenda for this month. We're going to talk about uh, two things. How do we move this committee forward? One. And um, two, what's going to be our goals for the year? Okay. Yes. So uh, I guess we should take attendance, Jackie, at this point. Yes. Okay. Uh, Troy Velez, I'm here. I'll do the attendance. Alicia Coleman. Alicia. Eric Diaz. Felicia Cranshaw. Tariq Ramos? Yes. Sandra Stratus? Yes. And Camille Napoleon? Okay. Uh, Jackie, you want to give me a little help here? I'm on two things and I can't see anything that we have on our agenda items because I'm on the phone and computer and. Sure. Very Sure. Um, so um, I guess um, so I see, um, you know, before the meeting, I just wanted to let you um, to make a little bit of a, a introduction about the Zoom functions. Um, so I see we have um, some guests um, joining us tonight. So for the guests, please, please put your names and your affiliations. Um, in the chat box, um, it is uh, just for signing in purpose, and um, in the chat is um, just like I said before for signing only and ask technical questions. So um, but do not um, talk about your opinions or issues um, in the chat box because um, this is our policy. And also, if you need to speak, um, please uh, raise your hand first, um, get recognized by the chair before you talk. Um, this is to make sure. Um, we conduct the meeting um, orderly and effectively. And um, so so I guess we can go back to the agenda, I think. Um, so last year, I think, um, uh, last year, I think in the summer or or in the early fall, I think I, um, there were some uh, board members um, asked us to reactivate, reactivate the NITA subcommittee. And there were at least, I mean, before that, there were actually some consideration whether we should um, fold the subcommittee um, into the land use committee. But I think that um, the housing type is very unique and also NYCHA is going through um, a conversion process which will have a tremendous impact on the residents. So I think NYCHA should be to remain as a separate um, committee or, or, or body. Um, so um, we want to make sure that the um, this committee is active. Um, but I mean, before I guess before we ask um, other TAs or 
um, residents or outsiders um, or session eight tenants to join um, there's some conversation. I think we need to ask ourselves, how do we um, can um, participate in this meeting um, uh, more actively? I think, I mean, this is a small group, um, but I think everyone should take some role. And I think, um, Troy, you may want to like talk about this, like how do we, um, the committee members and also um, maybe expand the committee. I mean, this committee need to be more Active, I guess that is like what I, what I wanted to see. Yeah, that was some of my concern um, with the size of our committee. We have a a couple of committee a uh, couple of committee members right now that are busy helping the community throughout COVID um, and things like that. So they've been absent from the meetings. Um, this is especially one of the reasons why I asked Sandra to join um, is because we need a uh, larger um, participation in this committee from community members. And um, it's been very low. I know Tariq has been coming to most of the meetings. Sandra has been here, um, but we need participation. We, we actually need to grow this committee some and add some new members to it um, because we, we have members that have commitments to the community now and, and a different capacity. And I'm not sure if they're coming back or not, you know? So we, we need to talk about that. We also need to talk about how, do, how we engage um, the Section 8 tenants and the, and the NITRA tenants. How do we engage them? How do we get our information out to them is one of the things that we're lacking as a committee also. So some, those are some of the things I want to discuss and, and open up to everyone while we're here right now. Committee minimum? Members, Tariq, Sandra. Troy, I and I want to say I apologize for my, um, you know, my lack of engagement over the couple of months I entered this year. I had three deaths in my family back to back, um, January, April, um, and just a few weeks ago. So um, I've been all over the place a little bit, but I am back. I tried to come in, come to the pub, listen in what was going on, but I am fully back and ready to get, roll my sleeves up, which are already up and get to work. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm Great here. Great um, what, what we're looking for is ideals on, you know, where we want to take the committee, you know? Um, what well, challenges we have, what, what, what obstacles the community has, um, you, you know, for instance, construction around Avenue D and, and Baruch and, and other NYCHA facilities in the city. Um, we, we really have to start addressing these issues because um, I live in Baruch and it, you know, it's, it's terrible right now. You know, so th that's a big issue for me, but yeah, I, know I know that we have other issues. I know that you know. Um, one of the issues that I know you were just talking about, it was just like engagement, attendance, you know, and participants, you know, and I know that arts and culture, that's also another issue that we have. Um, and so we have talked about like spending at least, you know, over a month time of just doing some outreach a little bit to kind of key stakeholder people that we might want to have at the meetings, you know, if it's, you know, I don't know, Jackie, is the public member kind of application done or is that, is that, that's a rolling basis, right? Um, I think for public members is year round. I don't right. think, I, I don't think you need a specific time to, to invite them to, to appoint them. Okay. But, but the, the, the public member um, is appointed by the, the board chair is not by the, the committee chair. So I think I mean, the committee chair can make suggestions, recommendations, but eventually that is the power of the, the board chair. So we have to go back to Alicia on that. I think the first thing we really need to do is get a list of the topics that need to be discussed. For example, like you said, construction is one of them. Uh, repairs is another one. Um, and uh, and once we decide on you know what's the most important or, or the order, that we want to present it to the community, I think outreach is absolutely the key. I know that C um, CBD, CB3, um, my experience is uh, we hosted a meeting here um, years ago and I created my own flyer 
And I was, you know, told that, you know, CB3 needs to create this flag for me. Um, so we really need to be able to do that. Once, I don't know, uh, Troy, if you want to target specific, um, uh, we don't want to target really specific, uh, not development, right? We want to engage everybody. And we want to engage topic, everyone. Right. We want to keep the topics so that they can, you know, spread within across the board. For example, repairs. We've had, um, I think, a very um, productive meeting and necessary meeting is that of repairs. If we can call the NYCHA, um, the NYCHA, um, I forgot the, um, the branch of it, what it's called exactly, but they, um, you have to fill in reports, you have to send, what are they called, Troy, when you call in a repair? Um, the, the, the 718 number? That, that, that yeah, they have, like the, but they have a specific term for it. Anyway, uh, but um, these, these people, their response time, right? Um, some mm -hmm. of the people's repairs go unanswered for a long period of time, you know, and we once had about two years ago, we had them come to the table and that was a really productive meeting because we had people from different uh, NYCHA developments here in CB3 and they were all able to voice the concern and to uh, get their calls. The protocols changed a little bit. So um, I said a lot just now. So um, like I said, we need to prioritize first what topics we need to discuss, what is exactly. the most important, and repairs are most important, right? Um, mm -hmm. Repairs and- uh, Repairs, security. Security. Um, you the, know, the, the yeah, ongoing the construction, uh -huh. without the work being done. Because last year they came and they told us that, uh, they gave us the percentage of what uh, developments were completed. So mm -hmm. it's it about time that they come back to the table to tell us where they are with that. Because um, the yes. probably hasn't been developed much in the last uh, 18 uh, months, I believe, since we had them here. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that's correct. Um, I, and and that's, that's all up and down from actually Delancey Street all the way up to 14th Street, if you look at it, you know, along the East River. Um, I, I don't know if there's a stoppage. There have been some completions. Yeah, but there have been some completions like uh, LaGuardia. They have um, successfully, you know, demolished and built the park over at the White House. Yes. Right? In, in LaGuardia. But, yes. But Baruch's, uh, Baruch's White House still is, you know, undecided, right? Yes, that, that hasn't even come back to parks yet. Right. Um, and Parks Department doesn't know what they're doing with it yet. Right. And we were talking about bringing it to landmarks, right? We, we wanted to kind of fight that issue, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first in New York State. That's another issue. But I mean, you know, we could just prioritize um, the concerns, what we think is most important to the residents, and then outreach to them and get them involved. Because I know that they want to be involved. Yes. But they have to know about it. So they, they have to know about it. Um, and walking around the community and talking to some of the tenants and people that I know, um, one, one of the biggest obstacles that we have is that, you know, they don't know when we have these meetings, you know? So I believe, and I've been speaking to you about this for a long time, Sandra, mm -hmm. if we engage them and, you know, whether it's with flyers, word of mouth, things like that, um, they'll be more informed and we'll have more participation and we'll hear from the community more, you know? Um, and, and, and I think us setting an agenda and not hearing their concerns is really not doing much. Exactly. You, you know? And, and, you know, even if we have a meeting just, to, just for them to come out and tell us what they would like to discuss, yeah. what, what is important to them, mm -hmm. what are to you, right? Um, also, uh, with Section 8, with, with uh, NYCHA eventually, right, converting to Section 8, um, that's also, you know, something that we yeah, need there, to there's a lot that we need to discuss, like it's the new blue, the, the blue deal. Um, yeah. You know, we, we have a lot of knowledge in our community on, on these things, and we really need to get down to it and engage them with it. Yeah. Jackie? So if we could make a list, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I've been taking down the list. Okay. Um, so um, I, I just want to echo um, what Sandra just brought up is the, the blueprint. And um, I think um, we, I mean, I guess in the beginning of uh, uh, last year, when we um, reactivate the, the meeting, you know, um, the blueprint is really important and the blueprint is too big. So somehow we need to figure out a systematic way um, to um, engage the nature residents um, about um, the blueprint and also um, and also how to make them genuinely understand what's going on because um, right now everything is on Zoom and people, um, the nature is saying that we are already doing outreach, but I think there are some um, technology barriers. There are some language barriers. A lot of uh, nature residents are not really engaged. So we have time, but I feel like this committee need to figure out a systematic way to um, get the message delivered to nature residents. And how, I don't know. I think this committee need to come up with a plan, but we need, a, we need to have a systematic plan for, for the, the blueprint because that is really big, it's too big. Um, and I also want to go back to very back, go, go back to the, to the beginning of our discussion. I think we also need to look at um, the, the membership of this committee. I, I want to revisit that topic because um, um, I'm not sure if Felicia is still um, on the committee or Felicia, no? Um, we, we, we discussed, me, you and Alicia discussed some things. Um, but I, I don't know if any if Alicia's made any final decisions okay. on the our, on our puppet members or Felicia. Right. Uh, so sure. I think I think I mean I what so um, I'm just gonna talk about this generally. I think um, some committees we have puppet members and and we really appreciate their contribution um, to the to the community board um, when they attend the meetings. However, um, I mean, we all have our responsibilities in our own lives, right? So when sometimes I feel like if cert, um, certain members are not able to participate in the meetings, then you need to decide, I guess, when I say you miss this committee, you need to decide how do we want to um, uh, bring in more people that are passionate about the topic you want to um, talk about and, and serve our community better. So I think um, I think that topic I mean, is awkward, but I don't think we should avoid it. How to make our committee more strong um, in terms of participation ourselves before we reaching out to other people internally. I think that is something we really, I mean, I understand the topic can be awkward and, and can be uh, uh, difficult, but I feel like this is an honest conversation we must go through. How to, uh, make, should we um, try to uh, recruit more public members or should we ask um, other board members to join us um, to make the community stronger? I think that is something we have to think about because otherwise a lot of work, I mean, because otherwise all the work is going to be on Troy and Sandra only, and I don't think it's fair. Uh, because you cannot do everything. I know I can do everything. Um, that's what I want to, to bring up. Yeah, uh, I think you make a good point, Jackie. And just my opinion would be to have, to add more public members and also add more commit um, board members. Um, a, a mixture of both couldn't hurt us, I don't believe. What do you think, Sandra? I know Felicia did not renew, so um, I don't know why. I, I thought the cutoff Jackie was April, or right? So I know she didn't renew. So I don't, I don't know why she's not. She's still on. Um, and um, Tariq, of course, is a full board member. So we have the sufficient number, right? We have to have five according to the bylaws, and. Uh, so the question is, if Alicia is still on, then we have sufficient membership as far as right. the bylaws. And with, with Eric. I mm -hmm. think uh, if Felicia didn't reapply, then at least tonight we meet the quorum because I, at the beginning of the meeting when Toy was taking the attendance, my concern is that 
if we met the quorum or not. And now if Felicia, if Felicia is out of the picture, I think we have six members right now. Oh, Tariq, am I wrong? Two, three, four, five, six. Five. Five. five if members. Felicia is not on, we, we have a total yes. of five. Five, and Camille is the only public member. That's it. Yeah. And, but according to quorum, we are not, we don't need quorums at this meeting right now. Does that sound right? You say um, there's some background noise. I'm sorry. Gonna... I said we we don't. I don't think we need quorum at this meeting. Um, and why? Because it's Sandra, Troy, me, three, three, right. Three. So if the total member is five, then we have three, and we need the quorum. Okay. That's what I understand. Am I understand? I Yes, more than half. Yeah, more than mm -hmm. half, right. More than half. Yep, yep, good. So I guess the question is that, I, I, I guess what I want to ask committee members to think about is that we need to actively looking out for, for people who we can bring into this group, I guess. That is okay. um, well, let me ask this question, Jackie. Um, we just all renewed. Have there been any new members appointed yet to the no, board? No, no. So um, that's a good question. Thank you, Troy. Um, I got an email from um, uh, the borough president's office. I think two weeks ago, they said they are having some delay and um, they are appointing new members, I think in June. So we may still have to wait a couple of weeks. Okay. If I remember correctly. I think that's the email I read. That's what I received from board president's office. Okay, so uh, I believe that gives us enough time before this committee meets again to try to get our attendance up and get some more community members. Correct. And then um, another topic we have to talk about is that um, uh, because um, I want to go back to the blueprint um, because. Um, for the year ago, close of the year, um, night, um, the land use um, committee, um, we voted, we didn't vote, but I, I told you were at that meeting too, we agreed that three items as our goals for the year. And one of the goals um, is to make sure that the nature residents are engaged in the blueprint outreach and genuinely understand all the issues. Um, so, and, and we also, previously nature committee also talked about um, is and so it is naturally that we assign this role to the nature subcommittee. Um, so you may also want to discuss with members how do we um, achieve this goal, right? Like how do we make sure all of them, all the nature residents, can be engaged in the blueprint? Can we get okay. the uh, can we get the office to uh, make flyers and in a couple of weeks in advance? Buyers, um, Jim, Jim, that I would need your. Yeah, sorry, I was raising my hand because I didn't want to cut in. Um, I think in the past we we've, we've mentioned that we would um, print flyers. I think it's just a matter of coordinating. You know what we can't do is distribute them because um, we're we're only usually only have. I mean, in general, we don't do that because we only have four staff members. But it's even worse now because there's only one or two of us in the office at a time, um, but we have, you know, we have a printer, an industrial, you know, commercial printer. Um, so, you know, I think the only thing is, um, I think materials that are distributed, um, like with the board's name on it, have to get approval from the chair. So if the, if the issue is that um, some format, you know, physical format, other than the online website posting is what's needed to get more participation, I think as long as like a draft flyer is, you know, shown, to Alicia and she gives it the okay, then we can print it as long as someone's able to come pick it up and then distribute it. Um, you know, th that's absolutely fine. We just, have, we just have to make sure we figure out the logistics because we are pretty limited um, with what the staff can do right now. But, but yeah, I don't know see why not as long as we follow that process. 
Yeah, that, that'll be great. Um, great, great, great topic, Sandra. Um, that was one of mine too. Um, I'm in agreement with that, that if we could get flyers made up, um, I'm sure I have over 300 kids that participate in, in, in my groups that they could put up some flyers for us um, here and there throughout uh, all the Section 8 and, and NYCHA um, I can, uh, buildings. I can help design a flyer. You could do the whole design. <laughs> um, if we can just put language, if we can get on an email or something just to put language together. But I also but, just kind of from like recommended Munir, um, who is great in the community. I think he'd be a great public member. I said if he has the time, but I think he's on the call today, you know, so it is yes, something he is. that we could reach out to him, send information over to him. He would be great. Yes. Uh, th this is a person in the community that I've been talking to every time I see him to try to join us. Um, I've been pushing them very hard, um, and I seen them just before I got on this call and told them, my brother, you got to get on this call with us today. Uh, Manir? Yes, I, I, I would love to uh, be a board member, uh, a public, let me get the title right. Can you say it again? Public member? Yes, I would love to be a public member of CP3. Um, if y'all so would love to have me. We, we are going to try to make that happen for you, buddy. And uh, we look forward to, to to having you. I know I do. Uh, me and you talk all the time about issues in the community. You know, mm -hmm. so I I, I will talk to Alicia, and uh, trying to make sure that that happens for us. It's okay. only a one-page application, nephew. All right. Okay. So, um. Jim, I, I have one question, Jim, to you. Um, Sorry, go ahead. You said that on the flyers, there had to be something from the district office on there, their logo. No, no um, I think what I, what I, what all, um, well, actually, there's two things I guess I should say. One is um, we usually put the, like the seal and the logo of the community board at the top or the mm -hmm. bottom of those kind of flyers. Um, which is just like a, a file we have at the office. I don't think it's a requirement, but we can definitely provide it. Um, but the other thing that is, I, I have to double check the bylaws, but I think it is a requirement that Alicia just um, see the final flyer and like give it the okay before it goes out. Um, so that's all I meant is just like in terms of it going through the district office to send it to us so we can make sure Alicia sees it and gives us, us the okay. Um, I'm like 99% sure that's in the bylaws, um, but we usually get it done pretty quickly. I think we've even done it in the past um, for like special events. The, the other piece I want to talk about, um, and I'm pulling up my calendar right now, just, just to make sure the timeline's clear. So, cause it, cause the monthly turnaround does happen faster than I expect every month. Um, and I think your next meeting's in July, right? That's the next, that would be the next night gym meeting. Yes. Okay, so then, then just in terms of, of, of like the timeline for this, um, you'll have the agenda set for that meeting by um, the exec meeting in June, which I don't have the date in front of me, but it should be like the fourth week of June. And then we will publish the agenda one week before the first meeting in July. Um, so like, I would say the only thing is we just have to wait um, to distribute them till that date, um, which, uh, I don't think we even have set yet and that will get figured out at exec, but that would be the timeline. So like after exec in June, you'll have the agenda, then we can make the flyer and then we can distribute the flyers um, a one week before, or, or sorry, no earlier than one week before the first meeting, I think would be the plan. So um, I know that's a little vague, but it'll at least help start to line up, you know, the next, the next steps. Okay. So ju just to make sure, um, getting everything correct. We set the agenda. Um, we, we, we get a date that we're going to meet, right? Yeah, and that, that'll, be, that'll, be, that'll be set up. Actually, I think we'll have the date set at this um, exact meeting, which meets tomorrow. Um, but, you know, the meeting, I think, wouldn't be until July. If, if, Jackie, is that, is that correct? Sorry, I'm not, I don't attend the exact meetings. Jackie usually attends. It's tomorrow, if, yes. That's correct. 
Yes. So we we would only be able to distribute the flyers one week before our committee meets. No, no, no. It would be um. It would be. It's a week a week before. Sorry, you actually could do it. Ask. You can you can do it earlier. The the issue is um. You have to publish the information at least one week before the first committee meeting of the month. That's like an open. Okay. Like, okay. So um, I see this will be no issue. I was just trying to make put some some deadlines out there just so everyone's thinking about like when would this have to be finished? When would Alicia have to give it the okay? Um, yeah, I think that you know in your case you usually meet the third week of the month, so that would probably be almost almost a full month. Of, of the flyer being able to go out and be distributed. Okay. Um, I want to also put this in writing. I, I know this is vague and that's part of the problem. I can put it in writing after the meeting. I just need a chance to look at the calendar and get the dates straight. Um, I want to make a clarification. Um, usually NITRA meetings should happen before land use. We are usually um, the, the third Tuesday of um, the month and, and NITRA should be um, before us. So I, I think it will be like the second week of the, the month. Um, just and this month is a little bit different because we have some um, holiday and and That's it becomes, right. yeah. So this month. Is so, so one way or the other, though, I think the plan should be to to do this flyer plan, and I, I will follow up to make sure the dates are are, are straight in everyone's head, and I'll put it in writing. Um, and yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I see that uh, Patricia has her hand up. Patricia. Hi, good evening. Um, hi, uh, Patricia from Council Member Margaret Chin's office. Um, um, we are happy to assist and do any email blasts you might need for NYCHA and Section 8 developments in community in the Council Member's district. So all you really have to do is just send it over and I'll be happy to do an email blast. And I also have a few suggestions, but you're, are you taking anything from non, non CB3 members? Yes, we are. Oh, okay. We'll take suggestions. All right. So, um, as far as outreach is concerned, flyers are always good. Um, email blasts are good. Unfortunately, not everybody has, not all residents have. Um, access or they understand Zoom meetings. Um, they're really old school. They want to go to an actual meeting, but it's important to get the tenant associations involved. That's, I think that would be your first point of contact, whether it's NYCHA or Section 8. It's important for all those, all, all of those committee members to at least tune in. Okay, mm -hmm. so when I when I saw what you were what was on the agenda, planning for NYCHA tenant associations meeting to hear issues from each development, um, this is a really good idea. You could have maybe maybe you want to have like a NYCHA roundtable and invite the NYCHA developments. And since community board three is so big, maybe you want to divvy it up into uh, council district one and council district two, and maybe council district three, because I know that CB3 also includes, right. I, it's Fulton houses, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. the, the issues particular to these council districts, I mean, they're, they're a universal, issues really uh, but the issues that are particular to the counts to those developments in the council district um they might be unique that you might not be able to just cover them with something generic um let me see oh uh, there was something else oh yeah aside from the issues uh construction is a huge giant issue repairs um i do According to our di division of labor, I work with uh, the NYCHA developments and my colleague Monica Guardiola also works with NYCHA developments. We have, we have them divided, um, but um, 
there are a lot of issues, especially with not just repairs, but with boilers, heat, hot water, and elevators. Mm -hmm. Elevators are a hideous issue, um, especially in the senior buildings. Um, security, everybody wants security. They want more security on their doors because they could just be yanked open. Um, so, but this also includes a lot of funding. Oh, funding, yes. You wanna make sure that the council, that the developments apply for city council capital and expense funding starting in January. You wanna make sure that they at least reach out to the council members in December. So, the, and to set up a meeting uh, maybe create a wish list of what top three capital items do you need? How much money would you like allocated for family day? Stuff like that. Um, community board three outreach, you might want to consider tabling their family days. I know they, have, they haven't had family days since, closed, since shut down, but when family days do resurrect themselves, it might be a good idea to set up a table, a community board three table and uh, have maybe some flyers explaining what community board three does and especially the NYCHA and section eight table. Um, I know Sandra does have a community day or at least she used to. Um, all entities and elected offices and all organizations from the surrounding area, we would come, we tabled, we gave out flyers, we spoke to residents, et cetera, et cetera. Then we gave out our information. So at least they know where to contact us. Um, you might wanna consider something like that. Maybe even when they open up their um, tenant association meetings, you might want to go to those. Would be a good idea and at least present yourselves and introduce yourselves to the residents. That That is really a great start, especially because people, there are some people that don't even know what a community board is, okay? Mm -hmm. I've had to explain it to them a hundred times. I'm like a broken record. So mm -hmm. the person personally attending one of the uh, tenant association meetings, whether it's NYCHA, or section eight, you real, and I know Sandra usually has a really good turnout with her meetings. People appreciate these things and they get to know, they get to put a face to the name and they get to know where they can go when they do have issues. So you might wanna consider something like that. Another huge giant issue is rodent abatement. Um, we are in a rodent reservoir. Uh, the mayor instituted the rodent abatement, whatever it is. It's an ongoing issue. It's getting better, but you might want to invite in some of the meetings, you might to attract people to come. You might want to invite the Department of Health and invite the rat lady, Caroline Bragdon and her team to speak about uh, rodent abatement at the developments. And NYCHA does have a rodent abatement team and that would be Josephine Bartlett. You mm -hmm. might want to invite her also. There's another issue with garbage and trash. Um, a few years ago, I worked on an issue at um, Seward Park Extension at on the Broom Street building trash just piled up all weekend, mountain of trash. And it was difficult, but um, development managers, they had broken compactors. Why are they having broken compactors? NYCHA should be ordering these through capital uh, investment. And another issue that would be interesting you might want to address is the smoke-free policy and how marijuana fits into the smoke-free policy. Uh, are they also included? Is it, are they, do people now that they can smoke marijuana, can, do they have to go downstairs 25 feet away from the building and 
smoke it out down there because a lot of complaints come in are people in the hallways and in the stairwell smoking marijuana. They were doing it before it became legal. Now Governor Cuomo made it legal. They can all smoke. So is that included in the smoke-free policy? And there are a lot of qualms about the blueprint. Um, I think maybe you're, the people you need to really address with NYCHA are the TA leaders and just have a discussion on the blueprint and pros and cons and why they are against it. Um, I know that Nydia Velasquez has a bill. She's got two bills um, seeking approval. One is her original uh, NYCHA bill from three years ago and there's a green bill to bring it up to speed with funding. So, um, and invite the elected offices because it, we, we all work together. And we're happy to do email blasts. You send me the email blast, trilingual, please. I think that's sort of, duh, you, you already know that. Uh, the trilingual flyers will be happy to send them out. Thank you, that's Patricia. Thank, <laughs> okay. thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Very informative. Um, Sandra, do you still have, a, have your hand up? Uh, Patricia, uh, yeah, I think that's a really great idea, right? Um, the email blast to tenant leaders. That e may even uh, take some of the burden off of us as far as getting stuff out. But the flyers should be pretty simplistic anyway, right? They probably maybe one phrase of please join us and then the agenda and then the Zoom information. I mean, it shouldn't be uh, mm -hmm. too detailed, but uh, the individual, depending on the topic, especially if it's like uh, repairs, I think that's really um, generic, right? And, and applicable to everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, breaking it up in sectors might be easy for, because we have a small board, so it might be easy to handle if we do break it up in those sectors like mm -hmm. that. Like, yeah. Um, you said in districts, right? Um, like with yeah. infill, that area being a separate, right? Um, and the, right, uh, separated by the wind for bridge so that, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really just a good idea. Um, that's it. Um, Thank you, Sandra. Uh, one more thing. Um, I don't know if you might want to separate um, section eight discussions um, Section 8 is a little bit different from NYCHA and, you know, just invite Section 8 leaders and see what's going on with their buildings. Uh, the systems are a little bit different. Um, I want something else. I forgot what it was. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, Jim, do you still have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly, there's three quick things that Pat made me think of. Um, so one is, that, and, and Troy, I remember we, we had, we talked about this a few times. One of our struggles, um, both with the district office and the board, I know Alicia didn't have any leads. We don't have a master list of the tenant association contacts, mm -hmm. section eight, uh, you know, in section eight or section nine. Um, and Pat, does your office have a master list of those contacts for district one? Absolutely. Yes, I do. So maybe let me let me email you <laughs> after the meeting at least to get the contacts for District One um, because that was a problem. I remember Troy, we were talking about this when we were trying to figure yes. out how to plan this meeting. Well, what's, what's the email list we should draw from? So let me follow up with you on that. That would be a huge help. Um, mm -hmm. Other two sure. were uh, oh oh for District for District Two and Three. Um, I don't have access to that. You might want to reach out to Carlina's yeah. office I, you know, or I didn't, reach out to PSA 4. Yeah, that's a good idea. It didn't even occur mm -hmm. to, to go to the council members' offices, so we can do that for both. But I'll, but I'll definitely email you tomorrow morning about this to at least get this sure. to, to start. Um, the other okay. thing was we did, um, we did have a meeting, maybe it was about two years ago. We, we had, we had um, exactly what Pat was saying about- Correct. Uh, rat focused meeting, right? And we had the DOH um, rat team. It was actually, I think Carolyn Bragdon wasn't able to come, but Angela Stravitz who works un right directly under her came. 
it was more of an informational meeting. Um, but it's it's kind of useful, I think, maybe every once in a while to have a check in. Um, and and I, I work with them really close. As I mean, so does Patrick. Yes. <laughs> And one of the things mm -hmm. they've really been struggling with is this was designated as a, as a dedicated rat reduction district, uh, community district three. Yeah. Their staff was mm -hmm. in, in the past year for, for emergency COVID response. They've been really short staffed. Essentially, they've had one, one or two people basically doing the work of the whole staff of like six or seven or, or even maybe like 10. Mm -hmm. They let us know recently that they are kind of ramping up back to rat mitigation efforts exclusively over the next few weeks. So it might be worthwhile like sometime this year to have kind of a check-in about where they're at with all this stuff because there was this big pause in their efforts in the community district because of COVID. Um, they, they are very open to coming out to these meetings. They're very, um, they're very good at community engagement. It tends to sometimes be more informational because um, because their their targeted actions are often request based. But it's a good it's a good way to just check in every once in a while. And the other thing I just wanted to bring up was um, with the blueprint is we did have that meeting in December where you passed a resolution um, that was basically calling just for like some ground rules for how we want to approach this. You know, the one thing was we had supported asked to. To kind of pause this until we could maybe get back to in-person meetings or do a little bit more rounds of engagement. Um, I know at that time the um, the commissioners or, or I guess uh, is yeah Greg Russ is considered the commissioner. The commissioner's office was kind of doing a roadshow um, through a lot of different districts and um, tenant associations all across the city about the blueprint. Um, and it, it kind of felt like, okay, we got our presentation then, but that was at this point, you know, six months ago. And because this, this committee meets every other month, you know, it might be worthwhile to at least start thinking and have, and like reaching out because NYCHA can, they, they, they do good community engagement, but it sometimes takes a while to schedule them in, in advance. So, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're thinking about that, you might want to target like a date in September or, you know, cause you have to think a few months out and we could start working on them to say like, let's come back for the update on the blueprint, um, especially because a lot of it depends on um, actually legislative action at the state and federal level. Um, there might there might be a whole different um, you know perspective they have for like what the timeline looks like, based you know different from what where they were at in December. So um, we've done that successfully before, and we can do it again. I guess is my is my point. Right. Plan it out ahead of time. Yeah, Good. and with blueprint, um, the the tenant associations and the residents have to sign off on it, and we I I've heard there are some there are some developments in favor of it. There are other developments that are not in favor of it. It's a real it's a real hot potato. Uh -huh. Oh, and. How many how many um, board or public members do you have that are Section Eight residents or NYCHA residents? Mm -hmm. Is that you a number that you want for now? For recruitment like that? Yes. Yes, I, I believe everyone on our committee is either a Section Eight resident or a NYCHA resident. Mm -hmm. Except Derek, I don't think. Except Eric. Derek. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Okay. Eric. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, just with all being said, what I have down so far, of things that we should be concentrating on, um, is just this is just a checklist. What I've been taking down right now, I have the blueprint. I have construction, repairs, security rodents, the smoke-free policy, funding and capital expense. Um, we, we should also be looking at a NYCHA roundtable where we invite NYCHA to come in and speak to us about some of these issues. Um, and something that I would like to add is to have uh, the council members come and speak with us also and share some of that, their ideals. Margaret Chen, Carlina, um, and, and others to come and share, you know, what they're thinking is of the blueprint, 
you know, the state of construction here, you know, all the issues that we want to discuss. Um, it's good. I believe it, it would be good for the tenants to hear from them also. Sure. Let, 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 let me know and I will brief the council member. And since it's a Zoom meeting uh, right now, so your next meeting is what, July? July, right, Jackie? Yeah. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. It would July also be good and then to have, it would Go ahead, also Sandra. Be, mm -hmm. It would also be good to have uh, Senator Kavanaugh since he chairs the committee for housing. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You and let me know uh, when you want to set that up. I'll brief the council member and see what we can do. Definitely. But remember, Cal, um, this is an election year. Mm -hmm. And Margaret is not running again. She's already yes. served her three terms. Um, so, and with NYCHA, um, you might also want to bear in mind, and because this is an election year, with every new mayor comes a new commissioner for NYCHA. So at what speed Greg Russ is operating at and how, what intensity to have uh, NYCHA TAs and residents sign on to the blueprint, uh, something you might want to think about. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra, anything else? I'm sorry, no. Tariq? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so with that being said, Jackie, are you still here? Yes. Jackie, you have anything else? No, um, I don't. It, it looks like we're going to be closing out and, um, oh, we, we need to do just a new statement because you're not going to, you, you have to vote on the slide. Um, you know, Hold normally on, you could do it next month, but because you're not meeting every month, you have to do it, both, you know, this month. Sorry about that. Uh, can you repeat? Yeah, so so district needs statement has to be done by every committee, um, and that's on your agenda this month. Um, but normally, you only take two months to do it. Some committees take three, but the board votes on it in July. So since you're meeting in May, skipping June, meeting in July, you, we have to introduce it tonight so that you okay. have it finished and voted on in July. You know, otherwise it won't be included in the... Um, uh, you know, in, in the final product. Um, and Jackie, how is that gonna work? So this meeting will, in July, this committee will meet before land use, then you'll approve it at land That's use. That's correct. And so then they're gonna approve it tonight and then we port to land use in June and then we're just gonna- oh, Right, it. I mean, that's true too. You can just, you can approve it tonight, but I think if you need to make changes- We can do that at land use, yes. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, Sorry. And also I think Patricia, uh, Patricia just, mentioned some great points that um, you may want to consider adding to the um, district. I mean, I guess that is more like a, a funding, uh, because you talk about like a, a, a budget. She talked about budget, but I guess for the district in this statement, we can just modify what we already have from previous years. Yeah, I mean, would it be helpful? I was gonna, I can go over the whole process. I mean, I, um, I'm I'm prepared to and happy to. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Help. Okay. Yeah. You have the floor. Yep. Okay. Um, sorry. Just uh, one second. I just want to pull up um, some information. Jackie, I don't need to screen share yet. I'll tell you when. Okay. Uh, okay. So so basically, let me just let me just set up this process. So the, the district needs statement is the community board's um, formal participation. It's the start of the community board's formal participation in the city budget process. It, it's a little confusing because it, it starts at the same time that the prior year's budget um, process is wrapping up. So um, you'll hear a lot of discussion in the news and elsewhere about city council and the mayor finalizing the budget. But what they're finalizing is the budget that you gave input on a year ago. So what we have to do right now um, is start the district need statement, which is part of um, the fiscal year 2023 budget, which begins in July. 2022, if that's not confusing enough. So, so the mindset should all be focused on conditions for July 
um, 2022, um, rather than the budget that would be going into effect this year. Um, so the first step in that process is a district needs statement. And basically all this does is outline um, conditions in the community, demographic, socioeconomic, and it identifies needs, especially unmet needs. Um, it's not really a policy document at all. We do our policy advocacy through resolutions. It's just kind of a, a document of what needs to be addressed. It doesn't have to say how to address it. It's just, it's just laying out the condition. Um, so you, the, there will be an overall um, kind of intro to the conditions in the community board um, in the beginning of the district needs st statement that the district office works on, but then every committee submits like a little section highlighting their top conditions that they wanna see met um, or addressed. The best way we, I, I've been saying that it's kind of like telling the story of what's going on in the district. Um, and it does inform the budget process because you identify the needs and then later in the year, we'll actually identify what we wanna see prioritized in the budget, like line item, budget items. Um, so if we're saying like the need is, you know, um, I'll do something easy, like like for the parks committee, they might say- Tim, I cannot hear from you. Are you muted? But you don't have the mute side. No, can you hear me now? Hello? Okay, it's good. Okay. Yeah, so, so a good example would be like the parks committee might say one of our needs is there's a park with a broken swing set um, on East 4th Street. Then the budget priority might be um, fund the repair of that broken swing set. So, so we're in like the identifying conditions part and it's a very high level overview. Later in the year, you'll do budget priorities. Um, the community board votes on the district needs statement in July. The committees will have already submitted their little sections. And then the whole board will vote on the whole document as a, as a, as a big picture, like 30 page document in July. It gets submitted as a package with the budget priorities in October. Um, and that's really it. Um, I think what we wanted to do tonight and what every committee is doing is just reading what, what your committee did for last year's district needs statement and seeing if any of that information is no longer accurate or it's no longer in need, we'll highlight it. And um, if the district office needs to go back and revise it, we can do that. But we just wanna look at last year's and see if it's still relevant or if it needs to be changed. Um, every committee is doing this. So um, so that's that. Um, Jackie, do you wanna, do you wanna uh, or actually, let me see that first, if anyone has questions, and then I can I can share last year so everyone can look at it. But I, I, I don't have control of the... Um, of the... I think Sandra has a hand. Can you unmute for... Because oh. I can unmute people, because I'm not host. Oh, I am host. Sandra, is that an old hand or a new hand? Old hand, sorry. Oh, that's okay. okay. I'm just going to lower so, that. In that Thanks, case, ben. let me um, try to share my screen. Um, I have the document ready and I just need to open it up. Um, let's see. Okay, is that big enough for everyone to see? Jackie, can you see that? I cannot see that. I, I don't think you are sharing your screen. Oh, sorry, one second. How about now? I'm not seeing anything yet. I don't know if. Um, no, why? It's saying that I. Oh, I'm... there you go. Okay, now. Okay, now. okay great. And is it is it big enough to read? It I'll is through it. Okay, so so you can kind of see um, this first paragraph is what I was mentioning when I when I said that each section tries to give a little a little overview of like the big picture. So the first paragraph here says, kind of kind of says, okay, we have fourteen thousand units of. Um, of NYCHA owned and managed housing in the district. Um, and we uh, kind of describe um, that it is, uh, we're saying viable, secure, publicly owned housing is vital to ensure that our community remains diverse and economically integrated. Um, but then the, some of the challenges had been, um, there were lots of changes in agency leadership. The new federal monitor had started. Um, at the time we were running this last year, um, funding from HUD was uncertain, especially with a Republican, um, government at the time. Um, and 
proposals for increased public-private partnership, um, we said underscored the fragile condition of NYCHA's current funding and operations. And then the big, the big thing I think that we should still keep in there is that the latest reports show $40 billion of capital repair needs over the next five years, um, which is even up from the 2018 number. And the way it was left last year was um, since so much of that was unknown and, and they were kind of like unrolling all these new programs, they were unrolling next gen. Um, well, that had been for a few years, but it was, it was, it was changing and evolving. Um, we, knew, we knew PACT and RAD were, were gonna be a thing and they had just announced the blueprint at the time. Um, we basically had said like one way or another, um, we need better community engagement and participation on this because um, there just wasn't enough information coming to the committee or the community board about how these programs would unfold. Um, so the exact way it was phrased was the NYCHA 2.0 programs, including next gen NYCHA infill, and permanent affordability commitment together, that's packed, the local iteration of the RAD program, as well as the blueprint for change proposal to create a preservation trust are new models for public housing that introduce the private sector into NYCHA properties and could dramatically change the way developments are managed and funded. Several developments in CD3 have been discussed as possible sites of implementation for both programs. There must be increased community engagement and transparency from NYCHA regarding these programs to better understand how they would impact the public housing stock and public housing residents in our district. So that was the whole statement last year. Um, you know, we can take comments on that. I feel like you might wanna add new things, but to me at least, and this is only my two cents from the district office, those all st seem to still be needs, um, but, but you know, we can take comments and highlight things that need to be followed up on or added. Um, I, I'm pretty good with that. Uh, any other members have any comments on it? Want to add anything? Um, I I think that um, the community still needs to be. Um, excuse me, I'm eating. Um, still is not. Um, well informed enough about this programs about uh, next gen and rad, so I think we should keep this here. There, I mean, they haven't really um, taken any action on this um, in the area, have they? In C CB three since this. You know, I should say I should. It's it's true. Um, you know, the same. It, basically, the the only action has been some outreach to TAs. I'm not even sure how many. And then the meeting where they came to us in December, because could because we 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 requested it. Um, so I would I would agree with you, um, right? If if communication and transparency is an issue, it hasn't really improved since the last time we wrote this. And Jim, um, I wanted to add that um, since a lot of federal money coming to New York State, and I just assume. Um, there will be something um, allocated specifically for nature. I just cannot imagine if there's no. Um, I feel like some language could be, yeah. um, we could like use some language to talk about that money. Um, I don't know, how, I mean, I'm sure like fundings have their specific guidelines, how to spend. And, and since we don't have those information yet, I, but I just feel like some language need to be about those money. Yeah, so that's a good point. I mean, the issue right now is we know we know the infrastructure money is coming in and we know that um, at least, well, we, there were already the bills introduced in the house by, by Nydia Velasquez's office, which were more generally about funding um, section nine NYCHA capital. And then, you know, there was, there was that one, then there was the green new deal for NYCHA bill. And then on top of that, when the infrastructure deal was announced, we know that at least Schumer was um, advocating for and still is pushing for some of that infrastructure money to go to NYCHA capital needs. I don't mm -hmm. think know what or how much or which, which developments or, or anything. This is a running problem through all the committees with the federal um, infrastructure money. But what I would say is this is because this is going to be about the budget in July, 2022, it, 
like I'm almost wondering if you should try to focus on that maybe as like an agenda item topic at a future meeting because that okay. money be distributed by by July 2022 or at least be the allocated for distribution and it's it almost is like something that we need to keep up with I feel like on a immediate basis um you know what I mean like like, mm -hmm. like yes as, as a maybe as an agenda item um but we could put something like um I don't I don't I have trouble coming up with these off the top of my head I mean, that's okay I mean if I mean you can um I guess I guess what we can do now is that, I mean, we don't expect you to do all the language tonight, right? So maybe we could just keep a bullet or something. Or of if you think uh, like twice, maybe it is not appropriate to be on the distribution statement because it's more about um, budget than statement than need statement, then we don't put it here. We use that for the for the budget. I you guess. know, if this is, if this makes sense to everyone, I'm gonna note, I'm gonna note this down as a bullet point for possible language to be added that I just have to work on, but I'm also going to note it down. Um, I need, I just need to, dis I just need to discuss it more. I think both with the district office and some of our partners in um, federal government, there's just, there's, we're still just not exactly clear how this is all working out. Um, right. But I do, I do want to like keep it on the radar for a possible agenda item. Even if it doesn't get in here, I, I almost think that would be a more effective way to advocate for how it's distributed in this district, um, because I think that that's going to get decided before July 2022. Um, but I but I'm, I'm writing this down, and I, I will I will try to figure it out one way or the other, and and I'll report back to you and and, and by both of you, I'll keep you in the loop about it. Okay. And another point is that I um, I guess I. I'm asking these questions to um, the committee members. I want, I mean, I understand um, nature issue is citywide issue. It's not specifically for our, just for our community. But I wonder if there are some issues that our community experience only um, that we can add as a need um, um, statement. Like only our community is having, I mean, the problems our community is having. What about that issue? I mean, the problem is that it's it get, it's getting into policy a little bit, but you know we had that issue at Brissetti, right, where, where it turned out that that there was there was there was like there was kind of a crime and, and quality of life issue, but but part of the source of it was the, the kind of interminable length that the um, construction sheds gets gets stuck up, and that's it's a local law issue. It's a citywide issue, but that's yeah, citywide but, nature. You know, I'm not sure, even sure how to say it as a need, but just, I mean, maybe the need is just um, to, you know, eat, like, even though we know that fu capital funding shortfalls are an uh, almost like insurmountable number, that we need to expedite completion of some of these capital projects as much as possible. You know, maybe that's just the second bullet point is like community participation and also, you know, exploring ways to expedite however possible, um, you know, crucially needed capital repairs. I, I, you know, I'll have to work on the language, but. You I know, agree I, with you. I, I think, I think, um, I, I think the fact is that nature is underfunded, so he's never going to have enough money. However, just because they don't have the money doesn't mean that we cannot talk about uh, the lack of capital funding to um, do this um, upgrade because they are affecting our lives. So I, and I, I would go as far as to say, Jackie, this actually, this actually, you know, you you could you can get into the funding issue, but but even generally, like the if we're doing district needs, the need is the repair, right? Yeah. Yeah. We know that they don't have the money for it. We can still say a need is to repair, you know, at least begin to repair some, you know, because they always do this thing where they start from the outside of the building, right? They do the facade. Mm -hmm for it. you know that's we can just say that's that's still priorities i think in the past a problem we've had is um like identifying which buildings need repairs and which don't and then we end up like not having enough time to sort that out but i i think it's worthwhile putting in like a high level just just say that the need is to expedite capital repairs you know any way possible like just something something broad um 
even if it, even if we know the money's not there. I, I, I would recommend that. You don't have to do it, but you know, I, I still think it's good to say this is a need. Sandra has a hand. Sandra, you are muted. Okay. Um, Jim, do you have any of our previous um, statements? Because, um, for example, the, the last one that I remember doing, uh, especially uh, when we had a NYCHA chair, um, that a president that was a NYCHA chair, Nancy. Um, yeah. A lot of, yeah. So a lot of uh, the particular particular issues were, for example, um, identifying identify in the Latics, right? Or in Smith housing, things that yeah. they want done. For example, a front door missing or you know, elevators that needed to be redone. Um, so we need to try to uh, get some outreach to identify what needs to be done specifically. And we can get that information from the tenant uh, leaders. Right. Yeah, so. So that's a good point. And I, and I think it's good to think about that. Um, so, so that was, that was, we definitely did have that. Um, so the, the one we're looking at right now is actually last year's um, untouched. This is, I haven't edited it at all. This was exactly okay. what was years. Two years ago was when um, Nancy had contributed like a lot of specifics about Vladek. Um, one thing we talked about after that was that, and this was just kind of, we're like trying to improve how we do this every year. And we realized that we should probably be putting the specific request for specific funding into the budget priorities and have like the general need for repairs in the district needs statement. So that's good okay. because it means you have more time to identify the like individual needs, whether it's a door here or an elevator, right. here, because that's not going to be until October, I think, when we have okay. to do that. So, um, my recommendation, I, I, could, I, could, I could get the old one. I don't have it in front of me, but I have it at the office. But, but things have probably changed anyway because it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's good to start thinking about that because you will have to do budget priorities next. Um, so keeping a running tally of those things is really helpful. Um, we, we often at the district office have a hard time identifying, um, you know, like net, net narrow requests and less people bring them to us. So I would say start start doing that. If it's on the back of your mind, it's a great idea. Okay. And Jim, I don't know if um, this is, uh, um, should be, is appropriate to be put um, in the district misstatement, but I feel like um, during the pandemic, what I, what I saw, I mean, what I still see is that um, uh, there's a shortfall of technology um, in the nature um, properties. And I just, I mean, it's a bigger issue, but I don't know how to address it. I don't even know if it's appropriate to be put in the DNS. Um, but the technology gap, I, I see the gap is huge there. And like broadband there, access, that kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of things. And, and I just don't know if it should be addressed in other committees or it should be addressed here. If you think it's NYCHA specific, um, then do it. Do it here. Um, I, I see NYCHA uh, has a lag, like compared to other neighborhoods. As like technology access is a is a is lagging. So if but, I put in, if I put in like what I would call placeholders, and 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 I said one of them is. Um, and just please excuse the imprecise language. I, I, I swear we'll, we'll improve it. But um, like tech, technological, uh, sorry, I'm spelling it wrong. Technological. Um, we, um, previously, we had passed a resolution about the NYCHA um, blueprint outreach. We said that we wanted um, the government to pause the outreach because um, because um, the language barriers and oh, not just the language barrier barriers it was mainly the technology barriers um, uh, NYCHA residents have. Um, so I don't know if you want to. Well, so what if I said? What if, if I'm hearing you? Could I say the need, right? The unmet need is to close a technolo close the technological gap. Is that the need? Yeah. Okay. And um, can I just put a note here to say in the in the community participation section that you also want to say something about language and technology um, outreach or something or um, 
Okay, so, so just everyone, please keep in mind that this, by the time you see this next, we will have improved this. Um, but then the, so the other one would be expedite uh, capital repairs, like, you know, however, po however possible. Um, I mean, to be frank, the problem is, is funding there, but I still think you could say that the need is that they just, they just don't get done fast enough. Um, so probably what I could do is try to write a couple of sentences um, and, and try to get a little bit of research done on like what the dollar amounts are to get some of this done for each of those. And I could send it to, to Troy and Jackie. So you have that as kind of your like working document that you would vote on in July. And that would be your contribution to the district needs statement. Is that? Is no, that no, no, that would be. Um, I think Troy will share this with um, committee members and and before um, they report, before Troy reports to the land use in June. And that would, I think because of the time restriction, this would not go back to NYCHA. It's going to be voted um, at the land use. It won't go back to, to NYCHA. Because the, okay. Right. Well, one, one, way or not, one way or the other, I will, I will get it done in time so that you you and Troy can facilitate the process however you need. You know, I. I oh, this, okay, right, yeah. right. Mm. Okay, um, I'm happy to take any questions or add or anything. I know it's a little bit of an iterative and uh, and sometimes opaque process, but I think um, you know you had a good you had a good thing to start with from last year, and these to me seem like you know they seem like needs that that could be addressed. Andra has a hand. Is that old hand or new hand? Okay. You are muted, but I hear you. I read your lips. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So do we have any more comments on the district needs statement? If no, um, I'm going um, to return uh, the meeting to Troy. Okay, Jackie, so my understanding is that we have to take a vote on this. Um, Am I correct? You, you can, yes, yes, you can. Okay, so we'll start with myself. Yes. Alicia? No. Eric Diaz? Um, I still have Felicia on, on our list. Felicia Crenshaw? No. Tariq Ramos? Yes. Sandra Stratus? Yes. And Camille Napoleon? Absent. Okay. I got it. Thank you. And um, and before um, we adjourn the meeting, and we actually have to take a roll call to adjourn the meeting, but before that, because I remember, Teresa, you said you want to be more involved, more engaged in the, um, the, the subcommittee meeting. I wonder if you want, you can be the Zoom um, facilitator in the future, that be something you can do. Who are you asking? Tariq. 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 Jackie, yeah, you want me to be the Zoom facilitator? Can you be the Zoom facilitator in the future? <laughs> of course I can. I can do that. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. You okay. are not just Tariq, you are terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Troy, I think you also need a secretary. But yes, you well, you just took that. my secretary and you made him the Zoom facilitator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but that's fine. Okay, so. Um, we'll, we'll find one. So, Troy, um, our exec is um, on Thursday, which is tomorrow. So, um, normally we have to, well, not normally, you actually have to turn in your uh, minutes um, tomorrow. I would say maybe before 1 p.m. <laughs> that you because yeah. we have meetings um, at um, 6:30, and 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 all the minutes have to be turned have have to be turned in uh, by the, the exec. So I would say maybe like 1 or 2 p.m. Oh, okay. Jim, I'm sorry. I will do my best to turn them in before that. We take corporate style minutes, so don't try to. I know. Uh, I'm gonna follow the sheet. Yeah, we don't do that. I will follow um, the instructions. Um, 
with that being said, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I think it was a very productive meeting for us. And uh, say thank you again to everyone. And uh, we'll take the final roll call to close out this meeting. Um, Troy here, Alicia, Eric Diaz, Felicia Cranshaw, Tariq Ramos. Yeah. Uh, Sandra Sutters. Yes. And Camille Napoleon. Okay. I guess that does it for us. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good night. Um, Harry, Good night, everyone. I've been I'm trying to reach you. Can you give me an email? Yep. How do I do that? I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.